Michelle, the Children's Librarian of the Sheridan County Public Library System, and welcome to another session of Bookmarks. This one is called The Tale of Emily Winsnap by Liz Kessler, and it's the first book in a series, which series are always kind of cool. The Tale of Emily Winsnap, I wonder what this could be about. Hmm, let's see here. Chapter one, can you keep a secret? Everyone has secrets, of course, but mine's different and it's kind of weird. Sometimes I even have nightmares that people will find out about it and lock me up in a zoo or in a scientist's laboratory. Mm, that doesn't sound good. It all started in seventh grade swim class on the first Wednesday afternoon at my new school. I was really looking forward to it. Mom hates swimming. She always used to change the subject when I asked her why I couldn't learn. But we live on a boat, I say. We actually do. That would be kind of cool. We're surrounded by water, but you're not getting in the water, she replied. Just look at all the pollution. You know what's in like when the day cruises have been through here? Now stop arguing and come and help me with the vegetables. She had kept me out of swimming lessons all the way through grade school, saying it was unhealthy. All those bodies mixing in the same water, she shut the door. That's not for us. Thank you very much. And each time I asked her, there would be the, that end of discussion. But the summer before I started middle school, I finally wore her down. All right, all right, she said. I give in. Just don't start trying to get me in there with you. I'd never been in the ocean. I never even had a bath. Hey, I'm not dirty or anything. I do take a shower every night, but it isn't enough room for a bathtub on the boat. So never in my life have I been totally immersed in the water until the first Wednesday afternoon of seventh grade. My mom bought me a special new bag to carry my new bathing suit and towel. On one side, I had a picture of a woman doing the crawl. I looked at the picture and dreamed about winning Olympic races with a striped racing suit and blue goggles just like hers. Only it didn't happen quite like that. When we got to the pool, a man with a whistle and white shorts and a red t-shirt told the girls to go change in one room and the boys in the other. I changed quickly in the corner. I didn't want anyone to see my skinny body. My legs are like sticks and are usually covered in scabs and bruises from getting on and off the king of the sea. That's our boat. I admit it's kind of a fancy name for a little houseboat with moldy ropes, peeling paint, and beds with the width of a ruler. Anyway, we used to just call it king. Julia Cross smiled at me and she put her clothes in her locker. I like your suit, she said. It's just plain black with a white stripe across the middle. I like your cap, I said, and smiled back as she squashed her hair into her tight pink swimming cap. I squeezed my ponytail into mine. I usually wear my hair loose. Mom made me put it in a scrunchie today. My hair is mousy brown and used to be short, but I'm growing out right now. It's a bit longer than shoulder length so far. Julie and I sit next to each other sometimes. We're not best friends. Sharon Madison used to be my best friend, but she went to St. Mary's. I'm at Brightport Junior High. Julie is the only person here that I might want to be friends with, best friends. But I think she really wants to be best friends with Mandy Rustin. They hang out together between classes. I don't mind, not really, except when I can't find my way to the cafeteria or some of the classes. At that moment, it might be nice to have someone to get lost with. Bridgeport Junior High is about 10 times bigger than my elementary school. It's like an enormous maze with millions of boys and girls who all seem to know where they're doing. You coming, Julia? Mandy Rushton stood between us with her back to me. She gave me a quick look over her shoulder, then whispered something in Julia's ear and laughed. Julia did look up as they passed by. Mandy lives on the pier, like me, only not on a boat. Her parents run the video arcade, and they've got an apartment upstairs. We used to be pretty good friends until last year. That's when I accidentally told my mom, who told Mandy's mom, that Mandy had showed me how to win free games on the Pin Wizard game machine. I didn't mean to get her into trouble, but well, let's just say I'm not exactly welcome in the arcade anymore. In fact, she hasn't spoken to me now. And now we ended up in the same swim class at Bridgeport Junior High. Fabulous. As if starting a new school the size of a city isn't bad enough, I finished getting ready and hurried out. Okay, listen up, 7C, the man with the whistle said. He told us to call him Bob. Any of you kids totally confident to swim on your own? Of course we can. We're not babies, Mandy sneered under her breath. Bob Turner said, okay then. Do you want to start off? Let's see what you can do. Mandy stepped into the pool. She stuck her thumb out. Oh, look at me. I'm a baby. I can't swim. Then she dropped herself sideways in the water, her thumb still in her mouth. She pretended to keep slipping under. She did this really over-the-top doggy paddle across the pool. Half the class was in hysterics by the time she reached the end. Bob wasn't. His face was red. Do you think that's funny? Get out now, he shouted at Mandy. She pulled herself out and grinned as she bowed to the class. That was completely out of order, Bob said as he handed her down. Now I'm afraid you get to sit on the side and watch the others. What? Mandy stopped grinning. That's not fair. What did I do? Bob turned his back on her. We'll start again. Who's happy to swim confidently and sensibly? 
About three-fourths of the class raised their hands. I was desperate to get the pool, but didn't dare put mine up. Not after that. All right, Bob, now then, you can get in if you want, but walk down to the shallow end. You turn to the rest of us. We were lined up shivering by the side of the pool. You guys will be with me. Let's go grab some kickboards. After he turned his head away, I snuck in with the group, making their way down to the shallow end. I never swung before, so I shouldn't have, but I couldn't help myself. I just knew I could do it. And the water looked so beautiful, laying there still and calm, as though it was holding its breath, waiting for someone to jump in and set it light with splashes and ripples. There were five big steps that lay gradually in the water. I stepped on the first one, and the warm water tickled my toes. Another step, and the water wobbled over my knees. Two more, and I pushed myself in the water. I decked my head under, reaching wide with my arms. As I held my breath and swam deeper, the silence of the water surrounded me and called to me, drawing my body through its creamy calm as if I found a new home. Now that's more like it, Bob shouted when I came up. You're a natural. Then he turned back to the others who were squinting and staring at me with an open mouth. Mandy's eyes fixed hated at me as Bob said, that's what I'd like to see you all doing by the end of the term. But then it happened. One minute I was skimming along like a flying fish. The next, my legs suddenly seized up. It felt as someone had glued my thighs together and strapped a splint on me. <laughs> if you want to find out what happened, you're going to need to read The Tale of Emily Winsnap by Liz Kistler. And I'm going to put my bookmark in there because I want to find out what happened too. And bookmarks are great because they mark your spot so you can always get back to it. And they tell the characters in the book to not do anything until you come back and open the book and continue reading. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Bob shouted everyone to stay put, dove in, and his shorts and t-shirt and swam over to me. It's my legs, I can't feel them. Don't worry, it's just a cramp, happens to everyone. Reached the big steps at the side of the pool and climbed on the top. As soon as I was halfway on the water, the weird feeling started to go away. Let's have a look at those legs. Can you lift your left one and your right one? Any pain? Just a cramp, but is it? Thanks for joining me. You brighten my day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.